Let's get into your reading. First of all, I have a few messages that came out when I was shuffling. So I'm going to relay the two messages and then we'll go into your um, love reading. First of all, um, I feel like there is a an energy of somebody putting on airs, okay? Somebody who's like, oh, I can afford that, I can buy that, or I can, you know, lead that lifestyle. But their bank account is not really allowing them to do that. So it's somebody putting on a front that they're incredibly, incredibly wealthy, incredibly um, just financially stable. But in reality, I feel like there is a lot of financial worries, a lot of financial lack. And this person is seriously lacking in financial planning. If you are single and dating, you want to be very, very careful about, you know, somebody flaunting all the time, just flaunting how much they're making, how much is in their bank account. You know, it's it's not very attractive, but um, I feel like you just want to be careful. Uh, watch out for those signs and, and signals, okay? Watch out for those red flags. Um, the second message that I have here is... Um, this is a, a, a week where you are starting things kind of over. You have a better sense of direction. You have a better sense of uh, what, you, what needs to be done from your end, what your expectations are, and what other people's expectations of you are. So if things have been very muddled, especially through you know um, October and all the rest of October, and I would say August, September, and October, if things have been very unclear, if you are getting into a new routine, if um, there has been a lot of changes, this is the month or the week where things start to kind of settle. The dust starts to settle. We are moving into the time of Scorpio, which is a fellow uh, water sign. So I felt this energy for you guys and for the Piscean people. So maybe it's um, the water energy makes it feel a lot less, make things feel a lot less urgent. Uh, make you feel a lot more comfortable and, you know, just intuitively you're a lot more in tune and you know what needs to be done and you are kind of leading the way and I feel like you know what to expect from other people and other people know what to expect from you. So there has been a lot of clearing up of energy. So let's get into your reading. Um, I really like the way that you come across in this spread, okay? This is your energy, air energy. So this is the Knight of Swords, and this is a person who's very courageous. Um, it's in the realm of air, so you are seen as somebody who's very um, communicative, who are very who who is very self-expressive. You can express your ideas, your beliefs, your likes and wants, and I feel overall you don't take things personally. Okay, um, you do listen to other people's uh, point of view. And you're able to like strategize and help them and troubleshoot for them. So this is someone who's very proactive, who leads the charge. And um, I feel like the, the way that your love interest or your partner sees you, they're not really sure if you're interested in them. So it's not in the realm of emotions. It's in the realm of communication in a very platonic manner. So for those of you who have a um, love interest or romantic interest, I feel like you're trying to impress them with your um, high-mindedness. You're trying to impress them with ideas, with your intelligence, with your plans. You're trying to impress them in a very, um, I want to say like crown chakra type of way. You know, this is what I think. This is what I know. This is what I believe, which is great because it actually allows them to understand you. However, if we're looking at the emotional aspect, I feel like they're not really sure where they stand with you. They're not really sure if you are prioritizing them. You seem like you're off doing your own things. And so they're not really, if they were to reach out, they feel like they would hinder your progress or they feel like they're getting in your way or they feel like you might not exactly have time for them. Okay. Um, for a few of you, very few, especially with a solid relationship partner, I do see this element about um, needing to defend your beliefs, okay? You and your partner might have discussions um, that are a little bit more like, um, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I feel like you kind of have to stand your ground and really defend, you know, I'm doing this because right now it makes more sense to me, whatever the reason is. I feel like you're not at a point where you take criticism or critiques or 
um, whatever lying down. I feel like you're at a point where you can stand up for your beliefs. So your energy is very um, proactive and aggressive, but in a good way. It's like you're not taking things at face value. You're digging deeper and you are trying to communicate that. Okay. This is overall someone who's very ambitious. And I feel like you're communicating with a lot of people, a lot of people from all different walks of life. And I feel like it's a big learning process. Okay. So you, I, I do see a lot of communication around you and around the people that you like. And I feel like the communication is a little bit more mental, less and less emotional. The way that your partner sees you, we have here the Strength card. And this is a really beautiful card that signifies uh, a lot of trust and a lot of faith between two people. Okay, it's a lion and the woman. They're both vulnerable. They're both, you know, different species. They might not communicate in the same way. Um, there's a lot of trust that can be had between the two of them. I mean, she's like stroking the lion, she's cooling its ego, and she is um, not afraid that it's going to turn and bite her. And the lion, likewise, trusts her enough to kind of feel at ease and to kind of be okay under her care. So I feel like there's a lot of nurturing and there's a lot of taking care of each other between you and your significant other or between you and a crush, where... I feel like your partner might have fallen on hard times, either physically, if they're sick, uh, if they're bogged down with a lot of responsibilities, if they're physically ill or whatever the situation might be, and you're playing the role of the caretaker. You're kind of like that knight in shining armor, um, defending their honor, leading the charge, taking care of them, and kind of pushing back the negative elements in their life so that they can, you know, follow their path. This is a card overall of seduction. One person has a lot of pride and the other person knows exactly what to say to stroke the ego. So I feel like, you know, even if you've had a bad day, your partner knows how to cheer you up. If they've had a bad day, they, they feel like you know how to cheer them up. So the energy is actually very, very harmonious. It's like a very quiet uh, love that's behind closed doors. It's like you're, you're not overly extravagant with public displays of affection. Everything is felt in it's it's all almost like the relationship is between the two people. No one needs to know and behind closed door that's when the tenderness and the gentleness comes out. So your partner appreciates the fact that you uh, keep their relationship very private and very close to your heart rather than sharing it with everybody else so that that's really good um the way you see your partner we have here the prince of cups so this is the knight of cups and this is somebody who wears their hearts on their sleeves when they're upset they need to vent when they're angry you're going to hear about it if they they're uh if they love you they're going to be very affectionate um i often see this as someone who does little things here and there um, for attention. Okay, so if you think of children, so the, the stereotypical example would be, you know, if a boy, uh, a little boy likes a little girl, he would pull her hair, he would do like little mean things to her just to get attention. So this is uh, that energy I'm picking up, someone who's attention seeking. Um, because deep down, they, they, they feel things, they like you, but they don't really know how to express it. And in a way, this is somebody that kind of like comes over to your desk if it's a coworker, and they ask about your weekend and they flirt and, and, and things like that. And then they leave. So not someone who's entirely stable. So the way that you see this person, you know that they have feelings for you, but you are not 100 percent sure you feel the same way if this is a crush that you're dealing with. And likewise, they're they're like they're not really sure because your energy is like this. He's moving so fast, you know, uh, I'm not going to be able to keep up with him. So somebody is feeling a little bit intimidated by you, by your achievements, by your accomplishments, by your mental faculties. They might think that you're really, really smart and they don't really know if they measure up, if they could keep up with you. So I see this person as like doing little things and, and saying little things here and there to tell you that they're interested in you. But I feel like they're not really taking the plunge because... 
I don't feel like you're 100% um, sure about this person or you're 100% emotionally invested in this person, okay? The way that you see them, we have here the Ace of Swords. Some of you might have recently broken up with a relationship and now you're, you know, severing ties and you are looking at dating opportunities around you. For others of you, there's just a lot of communication with the love interest or a significant other. And we're talking big item types of communication. This is like long-term planning, you know, where am I going to work? Where are you planning to work? Are we buying a property together? Are we moving in? Uh, when are you getting here? So like serious life changing types of communication, you know, I'm planning to go overseas uh, next year. Can you, you know, meet me there? So things like that. Things that are um, very, um, very important and communication that is uh, border bordering. And, and I feel like, you know, with the sword upright like this, when I think of like astrology, the uh, apex is the 10th house and the 10th house deals more with um, career, like big changes when it comes to career and dreams and, and, you know, achievements. And that's what it feels like to me, like you're talking about major, major uh, ideas with your partner and um, that you want to achieve this with your partner and your partner wants to achieve the same thing. So the two of you have very common goals, common life purpose, and you want the same things out of life, okay? Out of your career, out of your your work, out of life in general. So you're, you're having these major, major uh, discussions with um, a love interest or a partner. And what's coming into the picture between the two of you is we have here the Princess of Pentacles. So this is the Page of Pentacles. Uh, there is an offer coming into the picture, and I feel like you're making a gesture, uh, making a promise to somebody. When I'm done with this, when I'm done with, you know, taking care of my business, going off and, you know, um, taking care of whatever's over here, I will come back to you and I will, you know, make this gesture towards you. I feel like it's coming from your end. And um, I feel almost as if this is... This is what I have to give you right now, but I promise it's going to be a lot better in the future. So I, I see you kind of um, telling them, you know, so for example, um, when I mentioned, you know, financial issues earlier, I feel like it might pertain to you where you're like, okay, this is all that I have right now. This is all that I can offer. This is the best that I can offer right now, but I promise you one day. I can give you everything that you want. So I, I feel like there is a big major gesture that you're taking towards another person. For some of you, um, there are exes in the picture. And I see a lot of imagery here with children, okay? Um, so there might be financial payouts to, for childcare, for alimony, for things like that as it relates to an ex. Somebody is coming in soliciting, you know, oh, the kids are sick or, you know, um, I need more money to take care of the kids. So that I see is also coming into the picture. But overall, your love life looks a lot more stable. It looks a lot better, okay? Um, in other areas of your life, what we have here at the center is an air sign. So this is an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. This is somebody that is giving you really, really, really good advice. Um, I'm seeing the little squiggly lines at the base of her feet. She's drawing up a roadmap. She's drawing up some plans. She has a lot of ideas. So male or female, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is somebody that has a lot of ideas, a lot of plans. And they're a great um, tactician. So they're, they're great at formulating, you know, blueprints and, and figuring out things and troubleshooting. And there's a lot of communication between you and this person. And I feel like this person wants to partner up with you. I feel like they want to start a business with you. They might have mentioned that they want to start a business with you. And they're like, you can do this, I can do that. And I see a lot of ideas percolating around the two of you. They're very inspiring to, um, they're, they, they bring up a lot of inspiration in you. But the fact is the person, you know, there are two sides to their face. So you're not 100% certain if this is, 
if they're going to be stable, if their their ideas and their plans are sound and solid. So they're still you're taking everything that they, that they say with a grain of salt. Okay? And once again, the air energies indicate communication, but it doesn't indicate the physical action. And so this person gives you the ideas, and I feel like it's your responsibility to kind of run with it. And so I feel some of you, they're asking for a relationship, and then others, they're asking for a business relationship. They see where you've been. Five of Pentacles. Sorry. They see where you've been. This is a place of financial hardship. Which direction do I go? Which choices should I make? My resources are limited. If I invest here, um, I, there's too much sunk cost that I'm not, when, you know, times get rough, I'm not going to be able to recoup my losses. So I feel like you have some major decisions that you need to make when it comes to finances, when it comes to investments, when it comes overall to starting a business, um, partnering up with somebody, or even finding work. Okay, so there are a lot of choices. And I feel like, you know, the, the way this is set up, choices that are very contingent upon each other. If I take plan A, um, it's going to negate plan B, C, and D, etc. So it, it's almost like every decision comes with opportunity cost. If I go to Mexico for vacation, then I can't go to, you know, Canada, like things like that. Every decision comes with opportunity cost. And that's where you're at a point where you're not really sure. I see for many of you overcoming financial hardships as well. Because you have somebody in your midst that is making things possible. That's alleviating the burden for you. So we start out here with the full card. And this is like beginning a brand new journey. Jumping into something very, very enthusiastically. And so I feel like you might be partnering up, traveling, or doing something with this air sign here. And what I have as well is the Six of Swords sailing away over, you know, a very turbulent patch in your life and coming into a safe passage. So this facilitates communication. It also facilitates travel. So for those of you who have, um, who have dealt with travel delays, getting a visa, getting approval to cross the border into another country. You might consult a lawyer, an attorney, or somebody to facilitate the process for you. If you're doing this for a family member, it's also being facilitated, okay? So travel and movement are highly indicated, and we also have as well another travel card, Two of Pentacles. Uh, watch your financial resources. Don't overspend, don't overexert. I don't see big things that are worrisome, but I do see, once again, that message. Um, be careful about, you know, flaunting your money, okay? Um, so, for example, if you're in a new environment and you pull out a wad of cash, for example, somebody might be tempted and they might steal it. So just be careful about that, okay? Um, I do see so much travel and movement happening here. Be careful about your, you know, keeping your travel documents in one place and making copies just in case you misplace them or they get stolen and things like that. Um, visas, passports, um, train tickets just money, just make sure that you keep it close to you, okay?